Welcome to the Authentic Confidence Podcast with Ben Foskey. Our mission is to help you find, coach, and communicate confidence in every area of your career. Join us for real conversations about how to build a confident life with world-class leaders, educators, and influencers. Welcome to Authentic Confidence with Ben Foskey. And in today's episode, love to share my story. And we wanted to start with my story because I'm going to be asking lots of other people their stories. So we thought it was appropriate for episode one that I would share my story with you, my confidence journey, and hopefully it'll be of help and benefit to you. So early in my career, I, you know, growing up, um, grew up in Northeast Wisconsin, had a really pretty amazing childhood. Um, you know, was, did well, did well in athletics. I was a collegiate golfer. Um Things were going along pretty well. And then I graduated and had my first few jobs, and I had eight jobs in eight years. And um, yeah, I was depressed. I was miserable. I remember going for a walk. It was a cold February, 60 mile an hour winds, cold, and just being angry, being furious, and thinking, I'm about to quit my eighth job in eight years. And I remember screaming out loud, what's wrong with me? I felt like I was broken. I felt like I was nowhere near where other people were in their lives and in their careers. I was miserable. I was frustrated. I was depressed. I woke up. The sky was gray. I didn't want to hang out with my friends. I loved my family um, and spending time with them. But even that was a stretch because I was just so miserable every day about the people that I worked with. And I was extremely passive aggressive. I'd be super silent and not say anything in meetings. And then I would explode and talk about all the dysfunctional leadership decisions that are being made and what was wrong with the world and what was wrong with everyone else and how it wasn't my fault. It was their fault. And ultimately, uh, when I was quitting that eighth job, I had a decision to make. And I had a family friend um, that said, Ben, you've got one of two choices. You can either numb out like most people do, work for the weekend. Or you can decide what it is that you've been put on this planet to do. And luckily, I chose option two. But the problem was, is I asked him for his advice. And he said, I want you to read books, autobiographies of people who love their work and find out what it is you're missing. So I started doing that. But the problem is I'd read about Jack Welch in the morning and Mother Teresa at night. And I was more confused than ever. Because some were telling me, serve, 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 serve others. And other books were saying, you're a superhero, serve yourself. Find out what you want. Find out your dream and go for it. I was all over the place and confidence was clearly uh, the issue for me. My inner critic was raging. I was saying things to and about myself. I would never say to anyone else and life was not going well. And then I stumbled upon recording artists and I found them to be fascinating because recording artists, you know, no matter how famous their parents were, no matter how many gifts they were handed to them financially from others, They had to create their own career and their own roadmap. And they had to create, and and most people are terrified of public speaking. In this group, even more, wrote music and performed it in front of others. How terrifying is that? And so there's something fascinating that I found about recording artists. And one that I studied was Mick Fleetwood. And he's the drummer of Fleetwood Mac, one of the most iconic bands. And I love their music. And I loved his book and I listened to his book and it changed my life. Because in this book, he talked about the underconfidence issues that he faced, faced fearing the stage, fearing the public eye and all this. Uh, Here's one of the greatest drummers of all time, having some of the same exact struggles that I had. And I I was emotional because how much I connected to that story. So I started to read about all sorts of recording artists, thousands of hours of interviews. I read every book that I could find about recording artists to try to find what was I missing. And in that process, I discovered a pattern and a pattern that all of them went through to find success. And the same pattern is what I I started to apply to my, my own life. And I thought, okay, while this pattern is working for me, I went from hating my work to liking my work to loving my work. And some of the people that knew me during this time are like, what is happening with you? You are really different. Like you used to be miserable to be around. Now you're excited about things. And I 
shared with them the process that I was using that I learned from these recording artists. And they said, well, share that with me. And their lives started changing. And then they said, share with my organization. And their organization started to become more confident. And their organization started to thrive. And eventually, I founded Rise Leadership and the authentic confidence process to share this with as many people as possible. And then I got to go meet Mick Fleetwood, one of my heroes. Uh, We had just had a successful launch of the Confident Leader Formula, which you'll hear a little bit more about. It's, it's It's our online group coaching program that we've now launched, and hundreds of people have experienced that, and it's been going really, really well. But we launched it, and it went really well. And as a reward, we took the family to Hawaii, and we took a trip there. And it was an awesome trip, awesome vacation. And I found out that Mick Fleetwood was in town. He actually lives in a, a neighboring area. We were in Maui, and uh, he has a store in Paella. And so we went to visit him, and I was nervous because I had met some heroes before in the past, and it had not gone well. And I was really nervous about meeting him. And I'm in the store, and I'm looking at scarves, and I'm kind of procrastinating going up there. And my wife, Christy, who's awesome, is like, let's go meet him. Like, he's a hero of yours. Let's go. And I went up there and, you know, when you meet people that have have a lot of fans and are famous, you know, they're used to people coming up to them and telling them, hey, love your music. And they kind of, it's going through the motions. So I had a decision to make when I went up there, what I was going to say to them. Well, I decided to tell them the truth. So I told them, you know, hey, your music really changed my life. And then as I'm standing there and he's thanking me and he's kind of signing and moving things along and signing my book. And uh, I said, Mick, I just want to let you know that early in my career, I was depressed and my confidence was at an all time low. And it was your book and your music that started a major shift in my life. And as I started talking to him, he set the pen down and he looked up at me and he stared at me as if I was the only person on the planet. And he listened to me and he said, Ben, He didn't say Ben. He said, you know, hey, many people think we get into music because of the the benefits, right? The sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And, And he said, and that's true. There's parts of that that is absolutely true. The reason we keep performing is stories like this. And he was crying. He was emotional. He said, thank you for telling me this story. It mattered to me. And I just thought of my journey of from starting and, I mean, I would read books about people and they'd say, you know, and the only thing I got from my parents was this $30 million business. And I didn't have $30 in my checking account. And I was depressed and I was broke. And fast forwarding just a few short years, here I am sitting with Mick Fleetwood in Maui with my family and him saying, thank you. Thank you for taking the journey. And then he said something very interesting. He said, all of this work that I do, I followed the people before me. I emulated their music and I'm passing on that tradition. He said, now it's up to you. Continue on the tradition of inspiring people through your work and letting them know that they matter. And it gave me this renewed, I mean, I left... That meeting going, boy, if there if there's ever been a confirmation that this is the work that I should be doing and I love to do to help as many people as possible on their own confidence journey and let them know that they are enough and they can do it. Um, it was just this amazing moment in my life. And that's what I want for you. And in my journey, there's a few people I want to, I want to share with you and, and in my journey uh, that I've helped along the way. And I'm not going to use their real names because of the coaching and the work that we do. But I want you to think about these folks representing your own journey, your own journey. And the first person I want to talk to you about, we'll call her Brooklyn. Brooklyn came in to meet with me and she was struggling and she was in a male-dominated work environment. And she was believing that she was being diminished, not given opportunities, not being seen for her true value. And as we worked through the authentic confidence process, she started to see things differently. And that inner critic that we all have, that inner critic that keeps us stuck, that tells us we're not enough, that we can't do it, that we can't make it, that other people are out to get us, that they're against us. 
we talked through what her inner critic was looking like. And after a year, not only did she completely change the relationships that she had at work, she went from you know feeling like an outsider to having massive amounts of influence. She got promoted twice in an organization, and now the organization is actually considering her to become the next CEO. And this is because she did this work. She did the work of saying, what is my inner critic? How do I become a coach to myself? And then how do I communicate and coach others in that process? Another person that I worked with, we'll call him Brad. And Brad came in to, uh, to, to meet with me and he had some great instincts. He was coaching people well, but he wanted to do more. He wanted to actually coach people around confidence for a living. He wanted to help people in a more significant way than what he was doing. And he started off not knowing the process, not knowing how it worked. He was very underconfident in the early stages. We have assessments that I created with Dr. Melkin from Harvard, certified and validated by St. Norbert College. And he started using these assessments. And in the early stages, he was very unsure. But the feedback that he got from people was saying, Mark, this is awesome. This is enlightening. This is amazing. And now he's coaching leaders, superintendents, educators, corporate leaders full-time on their confidence journey. And he's doing better than he ever thought he could. And the final example I want to give to you, and uh, this example is a little tougher. Those, the first two would have the bias toward the underconfidence. And this last one, uh, he, has a, he has a bias toward overconfidence. Struggled being understood, being misunderstood by those around him. Had an addiction to being honest and yet repelled many of the relationships around him. And we'll call him Barry. And Barry came in to meet with me and his leaders didn't like him. His coworkers didn't like him, but he was a genius. He was smart. He got a lot of things done. He produced a lot of great results for the organization. And he believed that everyone was out to get him, that they pulled against him, that they were intentionally trying to hold him back. And after working together, we understood that actually people did appreciate him. They just didn't appreciate not being valued. And ultimately in life, that's what we all want. We all want to be valued. We all want to be appreciated. We all know we're making a difference. And after our time together, his team not only enjoyed working with him, but they gave him great feedback. And we love being included. We love being asked to the table to really make key strategic decisions with our team and for our organization. And he's thriving. He's now, he's happier than ever. His relationships are strong and the, 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 the results they're producing are results they've never seen before. And that's why we created this podcast. Is the, the stories that I shared today, we want to share a bunch of those so you can learn and relate to how does your story relate to this and what does your confidence journey look like? And ultimately what I want for all of us is, you know, I haven't arrived. I'm still working on my confidence journey. But where, where I am now from where I was is light years away. And that's what I want everyone listening to this. I want you to love your work. I want you to have the career that you deserve. I want it to be you know, a goals and accomplishments that you didn't even know would be possible. I want you to know they're possible. And I want you to help to guide you along with that journey. For some of you, it might be influencing your leader. It might be executive influence. It might be saying, you know what? Ben, you don't understand my leader. You don't understand how oppressive they are to me. You don't understand how micromanaging they are. You don't understand how they diminish my confidence every day. We're going to work on that and give you some strategies for that. And you're right, I don't understand. But we're going to give you some strategies that are proven to work. For some of you, you might be a CEO. You might be leading your own organization. You might say, Ben, I need more production out of the team that I have. I need higher expectations. I need more accountability. And, and I don't want to, to do it in a way that diminishes their confidence, that diminishes their ability to, to believe in themselves. Yet we need more. And we need a system and we need a process that can regularly produce the results that I want while people feeling empowered and believed in and supported. I get you. I work with many organizations where we support the boards and the executives and the C-suite in how to really build confidence systems so that people produce and feel valued in the process. Some of you might be human resources leaders. You're saying, Ben, I need a coaching process. I need a coaching process that's proven to get at the core issues that 
my teammates are facing. Some of them are facing underconfidence issues. Some are facing overconfidence issues. Some are facing imposter syndrome. Some are facing their first time leader and they have no idea what to do. And I need some tools and some resources and a process to, to put into our organization to make sure that people can be successful in their role. And we do that. And, and those many of the people that I work with are human resources leaders because that was my background before starting uh, the Rise Leadership Organization and the Authentic Confidence Process. I was the director of organizational development. I worked for a multinational firm headquartered in Montreal. And uh, I, I traveled all over North America helping human resources leaders with coaching and performance development systems that were proven to get the results that they wanted. And finally, some of you might be brand new leaders. You might say, Ben, I'm leading someone for the first time and I am overwhelmed and I have no idea what to do. We, ha we got you. We have... We have free assessments that we can provide to you. We have assessments that will help you understand what motivates every person on your team, what their confidence journey is. We have assessments to help you and your confidence journey to know exactly where you're at. Wherever you are in the, in the confidence continuum, we're here to support you. And I, we work with thousands of brand new leaders who really just need to be supported and need the foundational building blocks of what great leadership looks like. You've spent years perfecting your technical skills. And then you're put into leadership and say, figure it out. And oh, by the way, you better be awesome because every person I work with expects and is asking for a great leader. And now that's you. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. Wherever you are in that continuum from brand new leader to CEO, we're going to be sharing stories that can relate to you and your journey. And it's our mission to help a million leaders in the next five years learn and understand what authentic confidence means for them and the impact that they can have in their personal lives and their organizations, with their families, with their kids. That's our mission. We're here to help. So thank you for joining us for the first podcast and can't wait to share with you our next guest. Thank you so much.